Finding the perfect gift is a struggle we all face every year. One Lewisburg business has everything you need to create one-of-a-kind items for everyone on your list. In a Glaze Pottery Studio opened in October of 2007. The owner, Samantha Ulrich, is the first one to tell you that talent is not required to create a great looking piece of pottery. I do not have an art background. Um, you don't need one. I have stencils, tracing paper, sponges, tons of tools and things that you can use that really make it simple and you need absolutely no talent. You can see examples of items Sam has painted around the studio at 512 Market Street. The majority of things in here are done with stencils or tracing paper and it just takes practice and you can sketch on everything in pencil first, which I always do, and then you just go over the pencil with a brush, so if you screw up in the pencil, it doesn't matter because it burns off when it gets fired. In a glaze features bisque, which is a form of pottery that has already been fired once and is ready to be glazed. From figurines to dishes, holiday items to Christmas tree ornaments, there are plenty of options. Once a piece has been fired, it's lead free and food safe. I just always recommend treat them with care. If you know, hand wash, if you want them to last a long time, the glaze will thin over time. The studio is open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday with a last sitting at 6 p.m. Appointments are not necessary during these times. You just pick out the piece you want to paint and there's a number written on each piece and that covers the price of the piece. The majority of things are between 5 and 15 and then once you pick out your piece, I go over the how-tos with you and then there's a studio fee the, for adults it is seven dollars for an hour or eleven dollars for the day for kids it is five dollars for an hour or nine dollars for the day and that covers the paints the supplies the glazing and the firing i thought it would be fun to try my hand at painting so i brought along an in your neighborhood logo to go on a pencil cup if you want a background coat you have to paint it first so if you want to leave it white you can leave it white because this is not something that you're going to eat or drink out of so the one coat of clear glaze will be fine for the life of the piece because you're not gonna put it in the dishwasher unless you really want clean pencils. Since the background for season three's logo looks like parchment, I decided to try and recreate that effect on my pencil cup. Before I got started, Sam walked me through the basic rules of glazing. Okay, so, so what am I doing? Well, usually, typically speaking, when you paint, if you want full color, you have to do three coats. If it doesn't have three coats or it is not dried in between, their color will show up lighter and you'll be able to see brush strokes. But there are hair dryers that around the studio that you can use to blow dry it in between so you don't have to just sit here and literally watch paint dry. That could be fun though. <laughs> <laughs> light colors do not show up well in dark colors, but dark colors will cover light colors. And that is three coats of yellow on top of the dark blue. Wow. Today it would look like it covered. But when it fires, the light colors sink and the dark colors rise. So this is what it looks like. Even though today it would look like it showed up fine. So if you wanted to have a bright yellow star with a dark blue background, you'd actually have to paint around it. I selected three colors to sponge onto my piece to create a parchment effect. When sponging, the three coats of glaze rule kind of goes out the window. You just sponge on as much paint as you want, keeping in mind that less paint means more white will show through the finished piece. Unlike regular painting, water is not your friend when it comes to glazing bisque. One sponge for each color because you don't want anything to be wet when you work with it. Unlike typical paints, when these get wet, they, you know, it's not necessarily the paints, it's the piece. The piece will absorb the water and oh, it'll okay. absorb the color and it'll pull it down. Got it. So every brush should be dry, every sponge should be dry, everything should be dry when you work with it. If any of the brushes are wet, like these are wet because I just washed them, just dry them off in a paper towel first, make sure that they're, you know, dry enough that mm -hmm. the paint's not going to thin out. Yeah. Starting with my darkest color, I started sponging. School, but not always. And I kept sponging. And then I did some more sponging. While I worked, Sam and I talked about how she learned to paint pottery. As it turns out, much of it is trial and error. I have screwed up pretty much everything there is to screw up because I'm always trying to find a quicker way, an easier way, a faster way to do something. Mm -hmm. So I will try a bunch of new things that never work. And then I'm like, okay, how do I rectify this problem and actually have something that is functional afterwards as opposed to something that I have to wash off or toss because I completely destroyed it. But that's probably cool for the people who come in because then you can say, oh, I did this or you don't want to do it this way or you do want to do this tons that way. Of, there was something, where is it? Okay, like this was one of my sample things. I was like, all right, so I needed to paint something quickly. I was like, all right, so how do I get something that looks marbleized without taking time? So I sponged the whole thing white and then I thinned out white paint, drenched the top of it and then took rainbow colors and just squeezed out thin strips of the rainbow with it and then just spun it like this. 
and let the colors mix and swirl. And then when I sat it up, whatever was left. Brand. So I was just, and now people want to do it all the time. After three years of experience, Sam you know, can help hey, you fix how, just how about any mistake. So painting like, is pretty much worry-free. You know, and for those of you concerned about the mess, everything washes out. Oh really? Clothes, so if I threw hair, it on my yep. clothes? I'm covered in it every day. Um, I don't care because it comes out. There's That's good to know, though. I mean, for you know, having little kids of my own, mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, we're going to paint pottery, so wear something old. Yeah, and people like I have aprons here, but you know, you don't need them because everything will wash out. As I mentioned before, water is not your friend, so making sure a piece is completely dry before moving on to the next step is crucial. All right, so it's still wet. Yes. So now I need to blow now dry. we need to blow dry it. And we have to dry on low. Drying on low. Yes, because high dries the outer layer much quicker than the under layer. So when you stop drying after you dry it on high, all the moisture from the under layers come back up to the surface. How many times so, that that high pitch noise actually isn't supposed to be there? <laughs> it's like a high pitch squeak in it. So I'm going to dry this a little bit and let you tell me what dry looks like so mm -hmm. that I know what dry looks like. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I don't need dry. It's going to get really dull and really, really chalky. And then when all the dark spots are gone, that's when it's completely dry. Spots, but for the okay. most part, it, it looks, because you see how it's pretty much all one color? Even yeah. though you have three different shades there, right. your top coat, which is the lightest, is covering the whole thing. Right. And what so that's what, what you see you're now. Mm -hmm. is that those dark coat colors, mm -hmm. they'll come through. The dark colors are going to mm -hmm. come out mm -hmm. when this fires. Yes. So it will look that, have that sort of parchment mm -hmm. kind of look. Mm -hmm. Cool. There's a little bit of faith involved in painting with glazes since their true color is not revealed until the piece is fired. Now it was time to put the logo on. With the tracing paper, we just lay it on and I tape it in place, especially on a curved surface, just to make it easier to do. And the tricky part with these is that it wants to curve up at the ends huh. because it's a curved piece. So the corners want to go up to go along uh -huh. with the curves. So that Once the tracing paper and logo were taped down, I just had to trace over it with a pencil to get it onto the pencil cup. Before I started painting the letters, Sam had some good advice for me. Yeah. When you have a fine area to paint, I always recommend, well, text, I only do two coats instead of three. Okay. But it really depends on how thick you paint. So when you dip the fine brush in, if you twist it a little bit, you get a point on the very end. Oh, okay. And then you can dip just the tip in, and you have to find that, you know, whatever is most comfortable for you, the way to hold it. But for mm -hmm. me, when I'm doing fine stuff, it's easier for me to hold it straight up and down. Okay. And then you can do fine lines. Oh, okay. Just by having just the tip painted. And you can notice there's little frilly paints on there. If you notice that there's a lot of frills, just dip the whole thing in, spin it, and that will just lock oh, them in together. Oh, look at that. Doing such fine detail was a little tougher than I thought, but again, Sam's experience calmed my nerves. And everything can be fixed with sandpaper. So if you mess something up, it is not the end of the world. You just sand it off once it's dry and it comes off very easily once it's dry. With the first coat of glaze on the lettering, it was time to move on to the rooftop portion of the logo. Go around, do you e think I should line it and then fill it yeah, in? Yeah, but I, it might be easier if you turn it upside down because then your hand's not reaching over the wet paint, it will be reaching over dry paint. She's so handy. It took me about 30 minutes to get two coats of glaze on the lettering and three coats of glaze on the rooftop. While I worked, Sam and I talked about the process each piece goes through once it's painted. First, the glaze has to sit for 24 hours to dry. Then, it is put into a clear glaze. All the glazes actually, if it didn't have a clear glaze, would fire shiny. Um, okay. Because everything we're painting with is glazes. The clear glaze just puts a sealant coat on everything. So it smooths out any of the ridges or bumps or anything like that and just puts a cl nice clean coat on it. And also for things like piggy banks and boxes. If you don't want to paint inside the bag, you couldn't get in there in all the little crevices. So when I glaze the pieces, it will fill in and cover all the little spaces so that you don't have to worry about getting paint absolutely everywhere. The clear glaze has to cure for 12 hours before firing. Stilts keep each piece from baking onto the kiln shelves during the firing process. Everything sits on those and that's what makes it so you can actually paint the bottom of it because they sit on those instead of the shelves. Oh, okay. And then, but well, then you knock them off of it when they're done. I was going to say, because otherwise they would stick to the shelf, yeah. wouldn't they? So they stick to those and then you just knock them off and sand off the little spots of glass on them. Shelves inside the kiln can be set to varying heights depending on the pieces to be fired. It takes about nine hours for the kiln to reach its peak temperature. It goes to 1,828 degrees. 
hotter than a crematorium. <laughs> Once it reaches 1,828 degrees, the kiln shuts off. I have it set on a timer to turn on nine hours before I'm going to come in the next day. And Oh, so you come in and it's at its peak. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. So I run so it. So it heats up overnight yep. or at night mm -hmm. you come in, yep. boom, it's I at 1,800. It, yeah. If I know that I don't have anything to do in the morning, I'll have it set to turn off at 945 because I open at 10. And then I'll come in at 945, see that it hit its peak temperature, stopped, and then I open the windows, turn on the fans, and. 24 hours later, I can open it. <laughs> if you add it all up, from the time you leave your painted piece at the studio, it takes three days just to get through the glazing and firing process. That doesn't include the time Sam spends actually putting on the glaze, setting up and filling the kiln, or removing the pieces once the kiln is cooled down. All in all, it will be at least a week to 10 days before you can retrieve your piece. Because the holidays are such a busy time, Sam recommends allowing at least two weeks for processing. So be sure to take that into account when planning for a holiday gift. And here is the result of my hard work. A very cool looking season three pencil cup, painted by me, right here in your neighborhood.